Hey Haunters and Harry Potter fans, let me show you what I'm working on now for Diagon Alley. I am creating the shop signs that are going to be hung up um, next to the wall where the shops are. So I can show you the various stages of my process. So going off some of these pictures on the internet, this one happens to be Quality Quidditch Supplies, which is a really bad print out real pixely of this photograph, but it's better than nothing. And so judging by the size, I did my best guess of how big these signs are. So the first step is I cut a piece of foam roughly the size of what I think the sign is. And then I went ahead and I went to another piece of foam and I cut the frame part and glued that on. You can see this one, for example, has both sides done. So I got a frame on both sides. And then if the pieces don't quite match up, because I'm literally just doing this freehand, I just take a little bit of compound and then shove it in the corner, just like this one. It dries really hard, and then it completes that corner. And once you paint it, it really don't see that there's a gap there. So that's my first step. And then you can see that I have some of the writing already on it. Now for me, the fastest way to do it is for me to do this freehand. And I know that's probably not easiest for everyone, but for me, um, it's faster for me to draw it out than to, you know, what you can do. And of course, there's a million ways to do this, but you can print out the letters, blow them up, print them out, cut them out with a, you know, an exacto, and then put them over on the foam, and then you can trace them. Um, I've seen some other people, you know, they could glue it right on, and then if you wanted to, you know, make this relief, you could burn it right in with a, a wire cutter. Um, but I wasn't going to do anything like that. I just wanted to make this pretty quick and simple. And so I was just going to put the lettering right on top of the foam and then paint it. So again, I'm used to doing lettering. I've done lettering in the past many, many times. So all I did was I spaced out, uh, based on pictures where the words were going and if there's any decorative and I just lettered it out with a pencil. Um, after that I used a Sharpie and then I covered it over because the pencil marks are just really rough sketches. The final mark is the, the Sharpie. And then from there, I'm starting to paint them as you can see at this one. I'm going to paint it in. These letters happen to be kind of a yellowy gold color in the picture anyway. And so I'm going to paint them and leave a little bit of the black. And then I'm going to go in and painstakingly uh, paint around the letters. I thought about painting the whole thing and then writing in the letters, which may have been quicker, but I don't think the pencil mark, at least my experience, the pencil mark doesn't come out very well. So I did the penciling first, then did the letters, and then I will do the background. And it's, it's for me, it's just as fast. Some of the people it may not be faster. Maybe faster for just to paint the whole thing and then try to maybe with sketch it out that way or use stencils or whatever you want to do. But like I said, I'm really used to doing lettering, so this wasn't this was wasn't a, a hard process for me nor nor a long process. It was actually pretty quick. So you can see my penciling on this one and I'll show you a little bit of how I do that. So here's my picture. Again, it's a really really bad picture, but you can basically see kind of the font that is used, which is really close to all the other fonts, except for a couple of the other signs that I found were a little different, more decorative. But this font's pretty much just very, very simple. And so just judging by the distance of the side of the frame and then the spacing of the three words, I could measure out what I ended up with and try to first of all make the words the same height and then want to watch the border to make it the distance you know and then always keep your center line in mind and sometimes I even draw it usually I draw it so that it's the lettering is evenly spaced from you know left to right so top down left and right and then of course your letters are going to be roughly the same width with, ex with the exception of some of the skinnier ones like the I and the L and then uh, just basically watch your watch go by your photograph 
if Q, maybe I'll show you, Q is here, and this Q is over here, so I judge that distance, and I also judge the distances between the letters, too. And I try to make both D's uniform so they're the same size. You know, things like that. Like I said, I, I have had a lot of years just drawing and getting used to that process, so it's no big deal for me. But another way to do it was to pick a font you like, blow it up on the computer, print it out, cut them out, and then space them that way too. Or you can project them too. I've seen people use projectors to shine it up on a, you know, a board or a paper on, on, a, uh, on a screen and then trace it that way. Again, for me, this is the fastest way. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of this for you so you can kind of see how I do this. And I've always got my picture next to me and see if I can do this by holding the camera. I don't have my um, tripod out, so I'm just going to do my best shot. So I know I'm just going to quickly sketch and not worry about what it looks like. Like the S right here, just to get my sizing down. Okay, and I've already done a lot of these letters up top, so that's a good guide. And before I do any more details, I'm going to make sure that these letters are the right size because I'm not going to bother to put a lot of time in if I'm not spacing it correctly yet and I go back and make some changes or what have you. So let's see, if I do this right, I can get the whole word in here and space correctly. Again, I'm just going to do the skeleton of the whole thing. Alright, got an S here. Okay, make it about the same as the other S. Now this S looks like it's roughly over the H, so I'm a little off. So I need to make this a bit wider. I mean, this is obviously going to be in the dark. I'm not going to stress out over the details too much. People are not going to know. Um, but the, but the, the point is to make it as realistic as possible. And so if you just put a little bit more space, and sometimes it's a little hard to pencil draw on top of foam, but it's not it's actually not that bad. It's it's pretty easy. I'm taking a little liberties. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna make these these letters a little wider because I'm sure my sign size is not exactly what this is going to be. I did, I did my best guess. And so that was pretty easy. So I can move I can move my I over here and I can elongate my L. That's pretty easy. No one will notice that. You know my P is going to be a little larger. So that looks pretty close. Okay? So I'll pull back a little bit. I can see my sketches. I know where I made mistakes and I go in and I quickly can start putting those those that font detail in there every every uh, swish you know a little curve it's going to be skinny on top narrow on the other this is all done by sight and then you're going to have a, a flat line at the end for the S kind of similar to other S's that I've done okay there's the S E is going to have a a little point there. We're going to have a, a line up here, a line down there, making sure my lines are straight up and down. Eyes are easy. I'm go like this. You know, my, my lines right here are not very straight, but I'll make it straight with the Sharpie. And then L is going to be a little ending here just to make that font. You can always look at fonts and see what they, what the typical pattern is. Um, P, same thing. You're going to have a bottom little thing here. Loop de loop. You want to make sure you're not going beyond your lines. That's important. I can make them as uniform as possible. Don't worry too much if it's not perfect. I'm not. I know people are going to get the idea. Especially for a, um, a prop that they see very, very quickly. Once you put some color on this thing, it really is quite, quite convincing. There's a little hook here on the U. Okay, there. Okay, S. It's 
really simple. It's got a little, just like the other ones, got a little hook there. It's got a swoop here, skinny in the middle, another swoop down to the bottom and this. Okay, so I did that really quickly, just like the others. And then I will show you, just as an example, here's the Sharpie part. Okay. So I, I see my mistakes, but I see the more solid line of what I want. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just color in the part that I want to keep, disregarding the rest. Okay, it's going to be more skinny on the top, swoop on the sides, and you got this nice little, little swoop here. Okay, don't worry about that because the paint's going to fill that in. And then you have a nice little edge next to the gold paint for the letter. I'll do the U real quick. As you can see, for me, this is a lot faster than doing the... I've done the other way where you print it out and you cut it out and you trace it. Uh, I think I did that in a case where I wanted it really, really exact. But for something like this, these are rough looking signs anyway. I, the more pictures I look at on uh, for Diagon Alley on the internet, uh, the, it's really an old, old... it's supposed to be a very old area. Uh, like old London type stuff. So none of this, none of this stuff looks new. It's not pristine. You want it to look very aged. So there's my process. I'm gonna do this whole thing with, with the sharpie, and then add some color. You can see I'm starting to do the color, and then the last stage really is going to be uh, painting. And I have an example of another sign down here, which is much different than the others. This is the um, uh, Ollivanders one of its signs anyway. One side is color already. This is the wand shop. Now I just have to color the other side. And I've got the, the mixed color that I made, this kind of blue blacky color. And so that's going to be done. This one's easy because I don't have any letters on it. <laughs> um, and then after that I'm going to make some holes. I'm going to get some fake chain or maybe a real chain. I haven't decided. And I'm going to make these really cool holders for them to be attached to the shop sides. So anyway, that's my project. Um, I wanted to, I didn't want to do this, but I made the signs both sides uh, in case, you know, people do see it from the back just to make it more realistic. Um, I don't think I had to do that, but I just thought, eh, what the heck, I'll just make it fancy. Um, and I have at least three or four more shop signs that I'm going to be doing. Uh, there's the Leaky Cauldron and, um... Uh, shoot, I can't remember the other ones, but there's at least three others I think I've got going. So I'll have like a maybe half a dozen signs kind of up and around just to kind of fill it out and and uh, finish it up. So anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Uh, I'll finish these up and you guys can see the final product. And um, yeah, it'll be these will be cool. These will be a nice little little addition, very cheap too, because this is just recycled foam. Hey, haunters! Hi, haunters! <laughs> okay, we are going to cut some foam. It's going to be Ronan's very first time at cutting foam and Draken's. Now, Ronan is eight now, and Draken is six, so I think it's old enough to give this a try. Ronan's very excited, Mommy is very nervous, but if we stick to the plan, <laughs> we will do good and no problems, no boo boos. Okay, and what's the plan? Slow and careful. Slow and careful. As long as we stick to the plan, we will do fine. So let me give you some instruction, and then you'll know what to do. You're going to use my short 4-inch hot wire foam cutter. Do you see the guides? I always have guides so you know where you're going to cut. Now when I make a mistake, I X out the line that I'm not going to be using. So you don't cut this line, and you don't cut this line. You cut this line, okay? And once you tell all the haunters what you're going to be cutting out. Hmm? Hmm? Two of them. Oh, I will X that out in a moment, but tell me what we're cutting out. We are cutting out the signs for Hogsmeade. Yes, we're cutting out signs where we're doing Diagon Alley. I don't Diagon. know if we're going to do Hogsmeade. Now, which Maybe. sign are you going to be working on? Um, Leaky Cauldron. The Leaky Cauldron. Let me show everybody quickly. Our picture. 
Yep, when we first walk in, there's a leaky cauldron sign. So that's kind of the size. I've made some estimates, and now we're going to cut, okay? Now, do we touch the wire? No. Why? It will leave a mark on the skin like a skull, and it will stay there forever. Yes, because it is very hot, so we don't touch the wire. We go very slow. Now let me give you a tip when you're cutting. Because it's so hot, it cuts through the foam very quickly. So if you leave it in one place, it just makes a bigger and bigger and bigger hole until there's no more foam touching it. So what you need to do is you need to move it always slowly, never holding it still as you cut. Do you remember that? Yeah? The other thing you need to remember is, what was the other more important thing that you have to remember? Always move it and oh let the wire do the cutting all right this is not a knife that you saw or that you forced down okay you're going to let it burn through at its rate and when you see it cut through then you know to move it along to the next spot does that make sense you accidentally burn through it and burn this well we're not going to burn that i'm going to hold it up for you okay okay any other questions nope okay wait for me and i will get you ready Stop there, woman. okay you ready Okay, now flick flick the, the on button on. Now you have to wait. You have to wait a few minutes before it's hot enough. And then you can go through. It doesn't take too long. But once it's hot, it's hot. Okay, goes. There you go. Go nice and slow. Now remember, let it do the cutting. You don't force it. Wicked. Wicked, huh? Remember, let it do the cutting. You're not going to force it along. Move slowly and carefully. What's the red line for? Uh, that was a previous line that I was using for something else. You notice it's oval. I cut the um, <coughs> which is the which is the uh, evil queen's mirror, the magic mirror, out last year. So this is what's left of the inside part. Aww. Okay, now you're bending it a little bit. Let it do the cutting. There you go. You usually bend it a little bit when you do it. Uh, I try not to. And you usually do. That's when I always see you. Mm. There you go. Do I go along the red line? No. The black only. Go all the way across. Remember, we're making a, a rectangle. Good boy. Now, I didn't tell you this, but you see that thicker part with the wire? Well. No, 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 no. Keep cutting. You're fine. Just yeah. listen to what I'm saying. No, no. Pick, poke it all the way through. All the way through. There you go. That thicker part at the beginning of the wire, you don't cut with that part, okay? You just cut with the thin part that you're cutting right now. You're doing good. Very good. There you go. Okay, I'm holding it still. And when you come to the end, you can slice all the way through the foam or just pull it out. And be very careful. Okay, you're bending it a little bit, so let it, let it do the cutting. There you go. Good. Just go right Once with it. Once you get going, you can't stop, it looks like. It, it no, you cool. can't. Otherwise, remember, it'll burn a really big hole. Okay, now, when you get to the end, you can pull it out. Now, don't touch anything with it. Okay, good. Okay, da, 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 da. okay, wait. Now, you're... Wait, 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 wait. Just a minute. Just a minute. Okay, I don't have... This part is breaking off, so hang on one second. Okay, here's your last line. Go ahead and start at one end. Careful, slowly. Cool. Remember, get the right one. That's a boy. This one. Okay, you're bending it just a little. There you go. Let it do it, the cutting. Let's go back this way. Okay. Now remember, you can't leave it too long in one spot, otherwise it'll burn. I know. I'm not. Okay, go slower. Good. Remember, not too fast, not too slow. Very good. Okay, I'm going to let you hold the foam, okay? You got it? You can even let it sit down on the ground. Now watch out your hand when you come your way. Uh oh, I lit a folly. That's okay. Coming up. It's all right. Just to let it, let it do the cutting. Yay! Catch my little ball. Okay, make sure, make sure it's flat. You're kind of holding it at an angle a little bit. Now watch your hand when you come over. That's a boy. 
and keeping it nice and flat. This is looks looks.